say determinants of the gait. In children, the pattern of gait is irregular and variable. It becomes stable only by seven years of age. We should consider uh, certain theoretical mechanisms to understand the pathway of center of gravity. So, this is a theoretical that is a compass gait. If the lower extremities are considered as the rigid lever, permits only flexion and extension. The pathway of center of gravity would be a series of intersecting arcs. The radius of the arc is equal to the length of the lever of the lower extremity. Then the angular rotation of the hip in flexion is equal to hip in extension and the energy expenditure is very high for a compass gate. <coughs> so this is the image showing the compass gate. We can see a multiple uh, arcs. I mean arcs are, uh, uh, this is how the uh, center of gravity uh, translates in compass gate, multiple arcs in hypothetical compass case. So coming to the determinant factors which uh, determines the gait, first of all it's pelvic rotation. The magnitude of normal pelvic rotation is 4 degree to either side of the central axis. As pelvis is a rigid structure, rotation here occurs alternatively at, at each hip joint which passes from relative internal rotation to external rotation during the standstill. It somewhat flattens the curve of center of gravity in compass later, decreases the energy expenditure and it elevates the extremities of the arc. So the pelvic rota uh, rotation decreases the curve by elevating the extremities of the arc. The angle of inflection at the intersection of the successive arc is less abrupt. So this is the uh, determinant factor that is pelvic rotation over the uh, compass case. As uh, shown in the above image, we can see the dotted line represents the uh, arc of uh, compass gate, whereas uh, in the ends of the curve, uh, it has been it has become more flattened due to uh, elevating the extremities of the arc at the end. We can see it has been elevated when compared with compass gate. This is the influence of pelvic rotation over the compass gate center of gravity. Next, coming to the second determinant. In normal locomotion, pelvis is tilted downwards relative to side opposite to the weight bearing limb. The angular displacement on an average is 5 degree. It is due to relative adduction of extremity in stand phase to relative abduction in swing phase. To allow pelvic tilt, knee joint of that limb must flex for clearance of the swing. The energy expenditure here is lowered by pelvic tilt by flattening the center of gravity of the compass gate as done by the pelvic displacement. Then, uh, the reduction at the inflection of arc and knee flexion of swinging limb by shortening the pendulum. As uh, the knee flexes, uh, the pendulum has been shortened and thereby uh, decreasing the energy expenditure. So, uh, this is the image showing uh, the effect of pelvic tilt. So, here also you can see uh, it has been shortened, I mean flattened. The curve has been flattened when compared to that of the uh, compass gate. Next, coming to the third determinant, that is the knee flexion in stand space. In stance phase heel strike, the knee joint is in full extension. Thereafter, up to flat, uh, I mean foot flat, knee joint continues to flex and uh, at an average magnitude being 15 degrees. Anterior to the period of full weight bearing, knee goes into extension uh, heel strike, which is then immediately followed by terminal flexion again. This period of stance phase occupies 40 percentage of the gait and it is called the, present, uh, the period of double lock. So, note the, that the effects of the knee flexion combined with the pelvic rotation and the pelvic tilt achieve maximum vertical displacement of the center of gravity and thereby maximum flattening of the arc when, uh, of the compass gate center of gravity. So, when coming to uh, the summary of all three uh, determinants, the pelvic rotation elevates the extremities of the arc and thereby flattens the curve and the pelvic tilt and knee flexion, it depresses the summit and thereby flattens. So, all three flattens the Cent, uh, arc of uh, center of gravity. The arc, uh, the radius of the arc is 2 by 10 longer than the length of the lower extremity. So all these pelvic rotation, pelvic tilt and knee flexion increases the uh, radius of arc by flattening the curve. Uh, so the radius of the arc has uh, 2 by 10 longer than the length of the lower extremity. In the compass gate, it is uh, same as the length of the uh, lower extremity, but uh, due to these uh, determinants, the arc uh, diameter, I mean radius has been increased to 2 by 10, longer than that of lower extremity. This relative lengthening plays an important role in increasing velocity of gate that slight increase in energy cost. 
So the net effect of the determinants of pelvic rotation, pelvic tilt and knee flexion. So here we can see uh, this is the uh, uh, combus gate curve R. So here the uh, radius is less. When the radius is increasing and thereby uh, flattens the curve due to first of all uh, pelvic rotation, pelvic tilt and then the knee flexion constitute a flattening of the curve and uh, thereby increasing the radius of the R. Next, coming to the fourth and fifth determinant, that is a foot and knee uh, mechanics. It helps in smoothening out the pathway of the center of gravity. Two intersecting arcs of rotation established at foot during stand. The first arc occurs at heel contact and is framed by rotation of angle about a radius formed by heel. The second rotation of foot is uh, centered at forefoot is associated with heel raise. So at heel contact, the foot is maximum dorsiflex knee is fully extended and extremities at maximum length. Here the center of gravity will be at the lowest level of downward displacement. When a rapid plantar flexion with knee flexion, uh, it maintains center of gravity for some time, first flattening and slightly reversing the arc of translation. And uh, the termination of this arc is also flattened and slightly reversed by flexion of second knee associated with heel raise. So this is the image showing the effects of arc of foot and knee rotation, smoothening out the abrupt inflection at the intersection of the arc of translation of the uh, center of gravity. So uh, in initially the compass gate, it is uh, a continuous arc, arc, arc. But here it, uh, at the ends of the arc has been smoothened by the knee and foot biomechanics. So this is the uh, influence of the several determinants of gait on the passage of the center of gravity is seen in this exploded view of locomotion. All of the determinants have been uh, exploded into this uh, image and uh, this is how the center of gravity translates during normal gait. So uh, when compared with the compass gait which is more like arc form, it has become a, a sinusoidal curve that is the vertical displacement. Next coming to the sixth determinant that is the final one. That is the lateral displacement of the pelvis. The center of gravity displaces laterally twice in the cycle due to relative adduction of the hips. If the limbs are parallel, the displacement will be 3 inches. This excess displacement is corrected by tibiofemoral angle, thus making the displacement to 1 and 3 quarter inches. So in the uh, first image, we can see if the limbs were parallel, uh, there would be excessive lateral displacement of the center of gravity. So here the dotted line represents the uh, uh, center of gravity of the parallel limb. But when coming to the second image, through the influence of tibiofemoral angle and adduction of the hip joint, excessive lateral displacement is corrected and it's more like sinusoidal curve like uh, vertical displacement. So the sum of the effects of several determinants on the path of the center of gravity is viewed in the uh, true phase relationship is a sinusoidal curve. Next coming to the clinical examination of gait. Uh, the gross pathological dis uh, disturbance in limbs may have little difference in fundamental pattern as the loss of the functions of uh, one is well compensated by the exaggeration of other limbs. So clinically the six determinants should be checked into along with the loss of its range. Evaluation of pathological gait and the energy level. Normally the sum of uh, potential energy and kinetic energy remains a constant if no work is done. In computing energy levels of lower extremities, levels are not constant. The difference is by the work done by the muscle. The output of angle and hip is considerably greater than input. It means most energy required for level walking is provided by muscles acting on these joints. But in, when coming to knee joints, here the output is less than input because the joint absorbs energy. That is, the knee joint absorbs energy. It uh, is dissipated for decreasing vertical motion by flexion and to decelerate foot and leg in swim phase. But overall energy is less when compared to walking on stiff knee. We will come to it later. The absorbed energy is also used to impart uh, continued forward acceleration of the body in later part of swing phase when potential energy is lost. So the locomotion is not only really due to push off but also due to pull off of deceleration at the knee. In uh, center of gravity, the uh, sinusoidal pathway, energy is spent during its elevation and a part of energy is recovered during descent. So when we uh, go up the slope, we, we, we feel fatigue, but uh, uh, climbing down is easier. This is the reason. The energy is spent during its elevation and a part of energy is recovered during descent. Coming to uh, a study of the gate by force plate, uh, it measures the uh, ground reaction, magnitude of vertical force, torque, 
and horizontal shear and the central pressure of the pool. So here in the image we can see a, a, it is represented as a graph. Uh, this is how the force plate is. Uh, so this is the normal uh, ground reaction force of 28.6 kilogram 10 year old child uh, vertical reaction force. The normal one. We are coming to the abnormal one. The uh, how the uh, force plate is done. Uh, the heavy metal supported by four metal uh, columns bonded to opposing uh, pairs of strain gauges. The deformations are plotted in X, Y, Z as well as a torque and uh, is recorded in an oscillograph. It records directly the vertical acceleration from, uh, from this we can measure displacement of center of gravity. So it helps in studying the pathological locomotion and the degree of compensation. Let's coming to the pathological gauge. In an arthrost foot or uh, angle, uh, minor changes in displacement of hip and knee can be noted. As if the compensation is excellent only, change seen in the shock wave seen during the transaction of the body weight. It is achieved by exaggerating the initial knee bend on the side of the arthrost foot and thus preventing uh, the discontinuity of the knee displacement from being uh, transmitted to the trunk and maintain normal uh, displacement curve of center of gravity. So here in the image we can see the vertical load in the fused angle and the normal angle. It is almost uh, same. The vertical uh, deceleration of the body of the person is uh, pan arthrodosis of one foot is shown. There is no appreciable difference between records of the fused angle and the normal angle. The abrupt inflection of the arc of mo uh, motion at the fused angle is transmitted to uh, knee joint uh, which by excessive flexion maintains the smoothness of the path of translation of the center of gravity. Coming to the gait in humans while walking in shoes with various heights of heel. In low heel, the angular displacement of various segments similar in both sections. In high heel, that uh, decreases the contribution of the foot. Uh, this loss is uh, made up by pelvis and knee. In the initial knee flexion is increased in high heel and the uh, pelvic tilt and rotation is exaggerated in high heel. So this is the radical uh, floor reaction forces represented in the graph of the bare foot, flat foot, flat heel, and then comes to three in heel and three and a half in heel when it's a uh, loss of smoothness. When knee immobilized to gain clearance for foot, excess elevation of pelvis is required on the affected side and increased heel rate than normal. The mechanism of lower extremity apparently are able to compensate reasonably for the stiff knee as far as maintenance of normal pathway of center of gravity and minimizing the energy loss. But energy necessary to initiate swing phase on the side of the stiff knee is increased by three times. The early flexion of knee at the initiation of the swing phase is important since it converts leg into a double pendulum while the knee is flexing. Uh, the normal pendulum has become a double pendulum and decreases the moment of inertia of the old extremity. Upward press by a plantar flexion of the angle contributes to third and the flexion of the hip uh, occurs late in double weight bearing stance and in early swing contributes one third. Fixation of knee suppresses this mechanism and demands extra effort. The, uh, for this, uh, for alignment of this knee uh, or immobilize the 10 to 15 degree of knee flexion. This is the reason for uh, knee is uprolos or immobilized at 10 to 15 degree of knee flexion. This is the clinical importance of uh, the knee pathology. Next coming to the hip pathology, uh, we can detect the abnormalities of hip arthrodosis by noting the vertical floor reaction. Remaining uh, normal segments only partially compensate to loss of hip joint that is the pelvic rotation pins and lateral pelvic displacements are involved. At the point of maximum elevation of center of clarity of the body, the hip joints are in mid position with the uh, with respect to the rotation. From this position uh, to uh, double weight bearing in this feet is wider apart, pelvic rotates in the I mean externally, uh, that is the femur is internally rotated. So uh, when the hip is affected, the hip will be held in external rotation during swing phase so as to be in a position to make available whatever little internal rotation remains to allow pelvic to rotate in normal manner. This is what happens in hip pathology. So this is the image showing the uh, vertical floor reaction of the fused hip and the normal hip. The difference in the floor reaction force is represented and uh, these abnormalities are reflected on the normal side and that indicative of uh, the attempt to compensate at the normal hip for the loss of motion on the affected side. So coming to the conclusion of the general, the fundamental of locomotion is transmission of center of gravity through space along a pathway requiring least expenditure of energy. 
The six major determinants are pelvic rotation, pelvic tilt, knee and hip flexion, knee and hip interaction, and lateral pelvic displacement. Pathological gait is used viewed as an attempt to low level of energy consumption as possible by exaggerating the motions at unaffected level. Compensation is effective with loss of one determinant of which that knee is most costly. Loss of two determinants effective uh, effective make compensation impossible and cost of locomotion in terms of energy is three times that of normal. That's all. Uh, thank you. You can uh, you you maybe. റൈറ്റിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ഡോട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ദ പൾസ് പക്ഷേ പ്രാക്ടിക്കൽ ആയിട്ട് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ എന്തോരം സാധിക്കുന്നു പറയാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ല പൾസിനെ പറ്റിട്ട് യു കൻ ഹാവ് ഇതേപോലെ ഗേറ്റിനെ പറ്റി പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ പൾസിനെ പറ്റി നമുക്ക് കുറെ പറയാൻ പറ്റും അതേപോലെ ആണെന്ന് തോന്നുന്നു ഇതൊക്കെ പക്ഷേ എങ്ങനെ ദ മോർ യു പ്രാക്ടീസ് ഇറ്റ് യു ബിക്കോസ് പൾസ് നോക്കിയിട്ട് ചില വൈദ്യന്മാരെ അസുഖം കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുന്നൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞു കേട്ടിട്ടുണ്ട് അതേപോലെ ഗേറ്റ് നോക്കിയിട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് പോസിബിൾ ടു ഹാവ് എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ Uh, looking at the gate itself i said the, the more you become a master in the analysis of the gate the uh, you become a, a good clinician palpur thonittulle but i myself feels that i am i fails to uh, understand that i fail to practice that this journal uh, touches upon the another aspect of uh, normal gate that is how to analyze so uh, th- this is usually a question mm-hmm. what are the different methods of uh, mm-hmm. gait analysis so this is an old article uh, so newer modalities mm-hmm. of uh, gait analysis are available so we have to learn what are the methods of uh, analyzing gait that is one thing uh, the determinants of gait means uh, these are the degree of freedom allowed uh, in the three joints which are involved in the uh, locomotion main three joints are the hip uh, and the pelvis then you have got the knee joint and the ankle joint so the degree of freedom allows uh, the flattening of the arc and arc is converted into a sinusoidal pattern sinusoid means a uh, smooth curve which is uh, slowly oscillating so you will be having a, a straight gaze when you are moving like that so if the determinants of gait are affected you will be having a pathological gait okay uh, so uh, another important thing is the muscles involved uh, most muscles will be contracting eccentrically so we should know there are two different types of uh, muscle actions one is eccentric contraction other is the concentric contraction tell you uh, show your biceps contracting uh that is a concentric contraction suppose there is a weight and uh, that weight is so heavy that uh, you when you try to contract actually the biceps is lengthening that is concent- uh, eccentric contraction so when the muscle co- try to contract actually it is getting lengthened that is called eccentric contraction so eccentric contraction e means elongation the concentric contraction there is c means there is a real contraction of the uh, muscles most muscles will be eccentrically contracting during the gait two exceptions are tibialis anterior and the gastrocoleus uh, the tibialis anterior will be concentrically contracting during the sing phase so that will prevent uh, a foot drop it will be cons- eccentrically contracting during the heel strike that will prevent a uh, slapping of the foot gastrocoleus will be contracting concentrically at the mid stance but during the toe of phase it will be eccentrically contracting so uh, if you know all these things that will be good so basic thing is uh, to try t- this is actually a theory uh, paper question gait analysis so you should know what are the different methods what are the determinants what are the muscles involved and what you should also know the difference between walking and uh, running in walking one of the foot is grounded always in running you have got both foot off the ground at some point of time during your running so the ground reaction force is uh, double in case of a uh, running because uh, when you are in the air a lot of uh, gravity is acting on you 
so the ground reaction force is more so you will get tired when you uh, run but during walking uh, the ground reaction force is half that of running okay uh, jp sir that's uh, running uh, because i think uh, the stand phase uh, in the running the stand phase will be 60% usually uh, i mean 40% that will be equal i mean prior uh -huh. usually stand phase is 60% and there is a no. overlap of 20% okay. uh, then uh, 40% the same phase i mean yes you know when you there is uh, it is almost equal i mean you know where the point i'm not very sure is everybody watch on is any story right i'm not how many kilometers right i don't know much it is right or not uh, because i used to run earlier uh, for a sex race now the knee is not uh, <laughs> i don't really need to run and uh, so i analyze why i i think uh, in in running uh, <clears throat> there is no step of locking i mean it is only that how much i am right i don't know so uh, while uh, walking each every step we lock the um, uh, the uh, lower limb that is in the stand phase uh, then uh, then uh, uh, then put the other limb uh, up so so but in running there is a locking so when there is no locking the knee is unstable so that produces more strain on the knee and that may be the reason i am once i run for one day then uh, my, my knee pain increases <laughs> so that's something which i learned my my practice i don't know have you is it that theoretically agana parayillo arilla that is the difference between running and uh, um, and walking uh, there is a, uh, there is no locking uh, of the knee ഓക്കേ <laughs> 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 Uh, when the uh, when you um, uh, in, uh, there is a impact to the your leg the the knee is unstable uh, it is not as stable as a pillar angana uh, enki thoni i don't know how much it is an accepted fact or not okay this for my <laughs> my observation okay sir okay jp sir anything to add sir but i just remind you about the a statement which i used to make about the action of the solar major mm -hmm. you remember that statement in the sense it is a internal rotator and then until the axis of the femur crosses the long axis of the muscle when it becomes a lateral rotator well the comment on anatomy textbook is well if you don't understand it just tell the examiner what i have told you seeing the startled face of the students this is what the uh, the disadvantage of understanding too much of kinesiology because <laughs> that is the uh, 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 the action of the sovas major that's what uh, actually the question was sovas major is a flexor of the hip and a rotator of the femur till the axis of the femur crosses the long axis of the uh, muscle when it becomes an internal rotator so mm -hmm. professor right used to repeat the sentence twice and seeing the startled face of the students used to say well if you don't understand it just tell the examiner what i have told you <clears throat> so similarly learning about all these things are important for passing the examination but ultimately mm -hmm. as you rightly put it from a learning looking at the gate you might be able to understand a lot of uh, pathology which respect to Uh, this thing most of us would have seen a hemiplegic walking most of us would have seen a chap dragging the foot with a foot drop uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with a stiff knee with an amputated below knee etc because that is something which you will be able to appreciate now there are a lot of <coughs> uh, studies going on this uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me with respect to kinesiology because that helps us to de 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 make a design a better uh, artificial joint a total joint replacement or the plus for mm -hmm. and at one point i don't know whether you have noticed he mentioned about the pressure being absorbed in the knee and it is being taken over and shared by the muscles around the hip and the ankle 
Could you go back to that slide, please, Matthew? Sir. There was one mentioned where you have mentioned, not one, uh, where they are, uh, not exactly one also. The limbs, no. Sir, yes, sir. Correct. Yeah, uh, where you get a very wonderful example where the knee joint concentrates on this thing. Here, of course, uh, Dr. Mook did mention about locking the knee. Locking the knee is a method by which the femur rotates and completes the femoral and medial femoral contour over the tibia. When you are standing, that doesn't happen when you are sitting or walking. If you want to stand, you are able to stand the opportunity for hours together. A soldier is standing guard in the, in the four hours together because the, the whole lower limb, that femur and the tibia, acts like a single rod rather than two uh, distinct. It's like uh, uh, pushing one uh, tube into another to make it lengthen the, the tube, uh, like a pipe or whatever. So similarly, that's what is happening when it is locked. It doesn't happen while uh, running or uh, this thing. Whereas you... From this slide, we understand that there is a lot of pressure being absorbed by the knee joint. Probably that will help us to define various forms of uh, uh, joints. Probably that's the reason why we have empty number of models of knee joint arthroplast specimens. So the importance is to understand that, number one, that uh, it will help us to accept or uh, take a particular uh, joint for replacement and also help us to design footwear uh, and uh, well uh, from time immemorial it has been mentioned about why women use their uh, high heel shoes or a flat heel or whatever or for reasons best known to them so i don't know but i don't want to comment about it uh, in an open forum uh, uh, so these are some of the things so we what are what is our importance number one to select a particular joint that's very important Number two, help a patient with an amputation. Number three, uh, modify footwear and things like that, especially with respect to uh, foot arthritis and things like that. So these are how uh, we understand this. And you might be asking a question, getting a question in the uh, theory examination. So you should know something about it. I don't think I need to add more on that. The aspect is this. Since Dominic has uh, compared walking and running, an important point is that in running, there is no heel strike. Actually, the toes are striking and immediately taking off, toe off. The essential difference is there is no heel strike in running. Similarly, in Olympics or any competition where there is a walking race, it is compulsory that there should be a heel strike. If you do not impart a heel strike, you are disqualified from the race. So in walking, always there is a heel strike. Running, there is no heel strike. Okay, that is a very important point. That may be the reason for uh, explanation for not uh, the knee joint not going for locking. 